Bicycle Performance, Wikipedia Article Audio A bicycle's performance, in both biological and mechanical terms, is extraordinarily efficient. In terms of the amount of energy a person must expend to travel a given distance, cycling is calculated to be the most efficient self-powered means of transportation. In terms of the ratio of cargo weight a bicycle can carry to total weight, it is also a most efficient means of cargo transportation. From a mechanical viewpoint, up to 99% of the energy delivered by the rider into the pedals is transmitted to the wheels, although the use of gearing mechanisms reduces this by 1 to 7%, 4 to 12%, or 10 to 20%. The higher efficiencies in each range are achieved at higher power levels and in direct drive or with large driven cogs. Mechanical Efficiency Energy Efficiency A human being traveling on a bicycle at 1624 km/h, using only the power required to walk, is the most energy efficient means of human transport generally available. Air drag, which increases with the square of speed, requires increasingly higher power outputs relative to speed, power increasing with the cube of speed as power equals force times velocity. A bicycle in which the rider lies in a supine position is referred to as a recumbent bicycle or, if covered in an aerodynamic fairing to achieve very low air drag, as a streamliner. On firm, Flat ground, a 70 kg person requires about 60 watts to walk at 5 km per hour. That same person on a bicycle, on the same ground, with the same power output, can travel at 15 km per hour using an ordinary bicycle, so in these conditions the energy expenditure of cycling is one third of walking. Active humans can produce between 1.5 W/kg and 24 W/kg. 5 W/kg is about the level reachable by ordinary male athletes for longer periods. Maximum power levels during 1 hour range from about 200 W to 500 W. The energy input to the human body is in the form of food energy usually quantified in kilocalories or kilojoules. This can be related to a certain distance traveled and to body weight, giving units such as kj slash. The rate of food consumption, i.e. the amount consumed during a certain period of time, is the input power. This can be measured in kcal slash day or in j slash s equals w. This input power can be determined by measuring oxygen uptake, or in the long-term food consumption, assuming no change of weight. This includes the power needed just for living, called the basal metabolic rate BMR or roughly the resting metabolic rate. Energy Output The required food can also be calculated by dividing the output power by the muscle efficiency. This is 18 to 26 percent. From the example above, if a 70 kg person is cycling at 15 km per hour by expending 60 W and a muscular efficiency of 20 percent is assumed, roughly 1 kg slash extra food is required. For calculating the total food required during the trip, the BMR must first be added to the input power. If the 70 kg person is an old, short woman, her BMR could be 60 W, in all other cases a bit higher. Viewed this way the efficiency in this example is effectively halved and roughly 2 kg slash total food is required. Although this shows a large relative increase in food required for low power cycling, in practice it is hardly noticed as the extra energy cost of an hour's cycling can be covered with 50 grams nuts or chocolate. With long and fast or uphill cycling, 
the extra food requirement however becomes evident. Energy Input To complete the efficiency calculation, the type of food consumed determines the overall efficiency. For this the energy needed to produce, distribute, and cook the food must be considered. In utility cycling there is a large variation, an elderly person on an upright roadster might do less than 10 km per hour while a fitter or younger person could easily do twice that on the same bicycle. For cyclists in Copenhagen, the average cycling speed is 15.5 km per hour. On a racing bicycle, a reasonably fit rider can ride at 40 km per hour on flat surface. Typical Speeds In competitive cycling a sustainable high speed is augmented by the aerodynamic effects of the peloton. The group can maintain a much higher speed over extended distance due to various cyclists taking turns at the head of the wind then dropping behind to rest. Similarly a team time trial produces the same effect. Cycling Speed Records The highest speed officially recorded for any human-powered vehicle on level ground and with calm winds and without external aids is 144.18 km per hour set in 2016 by Todd Reichert in the Ada Speed Bike, a streamlined recumbent bicycle. In the 1989 race across America, a group of HPVs crossed the United States in just five days. The highest speed officially recorded for a bicycle ridden in a conventional upright position under fully fared conditions was 82.52 km per hour over 200 m. That record was set in 1986 by Jim Glover on a Molten AM7 at the Human Powered Speed Championships during EXP 086 World Fair in Vancouver. Reduction of Weight and Rotating Mass There has been major corporate competition to lower the weight of racing bikes in order to be faster uphill and accelerating. The UCI sets a limit of 6.8 kg on the minimum weight of bicycles to be used in sanctioned races. Cycling on the level at a constant speed, a large weight reduction saves only a negligible amount of power and it is on the contrary beneficial to add mass in the form of aerodynamic improvements. But climbing steeply, any weight reduction is felt directly. E.g. a reduction of 10% of the total system weight will save nearly 10% power. Advantages of Reduced Mass A reduced mass is also directly felt when accelerating. For example, the analytic cycling calculator gives a time-slash-distance advantage of 0.16s-slash-188 cm for a sprinter with 500 grams lighter wheels. In a Kreitrium race, if a rider has to brake entering each corner, then this is wasted as heat. For a flat Kreitrium at 40 km per hour, 1 km circuit, 4 corners per lap, 10 km per hour speed loss at each corner, 1 hour duration, there would be 160 corner jumps. For 90 kg rider and bike, this adds roughly one-third effort compared to the same ride at a steady speed, and a mass reduction of 10% of the total system weight could thus give about a 3% advantage. The mass of tires and rims must be accelerated linearly and rotationally. It can be shown that the effect of rim and tire mass of typical spoked wheels is effectively doubled. Reducing their mass is thus especially noticeable in the case of sprints and corner jumps in a Kreitrium. Heated debates over the relative importance of weight saving and optimization of tires and aerodynamics are common in cycling. By calculating the power requirements for moving a bike and rider, the relative energy costs of air resistance, rolling resistance, slope resistance, and acceleration can be evaluated.
there are well-known equations that give the power required to overcome the various resistances mainly as a function of speed. The power PD, needed to overcome air drag or resistance is Advantages of light wheels Where Power required The concept of apparent wind is only applicable here if it comes from a true headwind or tailwind. Then, V, A, is the sum of, V, R, and the headwind or the difference between, V, R, and the tailwind. If this difference is negative PD, must be regarded as assistance rather than resistance. A more comprehensive treatment is given in Zorn. If however the wind has a sideways component and especially if the bicycle is streamlined, a proper treatment involves considering the forces on the surfaces like the forces on sails. 175W for a 90 kg bike and rider to go 9M slash S on the flat, or 2.6M slash S on a 7% grade, 300W for a 90 kg bike and rider at 11M slash S on the flat or 4.3M slash S on a 7% grade, 165W for a 65 kg bike and rider to go 9M slash S on the flat, or 3.3M slash S on a 7% grade, 285W for a 65 kg bike and rider at 11M slash S on the flat or 5.3M slash S on a 7% grade. The drag coefficient depends on the shape of the object and on the Reynolds number, which itself depends on, V, A. However, if, A, is the cross-sectional area, C, D can be taken as one for usual cycling speeds of a rider on an upright bicycle. The power P, R, for overcoming the tire's rolling resistances is given by Tour Mallet equals 7%, Golly Beer equals 7.5%, Alp de Hughes equals 8.6%, Mont Ventoux equals 7.1%. Where G is gravity, nominally 9.8 m slash s2, and m is mass. The approximation can be used with all normal coefficients of rolling resistance, c, r, r. Usually this is assumed to be independent of, v, r, although it is recognized that it increases with speed. Measurements on a roller mechanism give low speed coefficients of 0.003 to 0.006 for a variety of tires inflated to their maximum recommended pressures, increasing about 50% at 10 m s Air drag Rolling resistance Climbing power Power for acceleration the vertical climbing power PS, on slope, S, is given by. This approximation approaches the real solution for small, i.e. normal grades. For extremely steep slopes such as 0.35 the approximation gives an overestimation of about 6%. As this power is used to increase the potential energy of bike and rider, it is returned as motive power when going downhill and not lost unless the rider brakes or travels faster than desired. The power P, A, for accelerating the bike and rider having total mass M with acceleration A and rotationally also the wheels having mass, M, W, is. The approximation is valid if, M, W, is assumed to be concentrated at the rims and tires and these are not slipping. The mass of such wheels can thus be counted twice for this calculation, independent of the wheel's sizes. As this power is used to increase the kinetic energy of bike and rider, it is returned when decelerating and not lost unless the rider brakes or travels faster than desired. Where, Ada 
is the mechanical efficiency of the drivetrain described at the beginning of this article. Total power Given this simplified equation, one can calculate some values of interest. For example, assuming no wind, one gets the following results for power delivered to the pedals. Reducing the weight of the bike and rider by 1 kg would increase speed by 0.01 m s at 9 m s on the flat, 40 km tt. The same reduction on a 7% grade would be worth 0.04 m s to 0.07 m s. If one climbed for one hour, Saving 1 pound would gain between 69 meters and 110 m less effect for the heavier bike plus rider combination asterisk 1 h asterisk 1600 m slash me equals 69 m. For reference, the big climbs in the Tour de France have the following average grades. <laughs>